Hello Aries, today I'm going to be looking at what your person is thinking, what they're feeling, and more importantly, what action they might be taking towards you over the next week or two. And remember, this is a timeless reading, so whenever you're drawn to it is whenever the message is right for you. Alright, let's get into it. So for my Aries viewers, what is your person, and it could be an ex, could be a new person, could be a current partner, um, whoever wants to come through, let's see, what is your person, I feel like you're really seductive right now, and I feel like you're going to have a lot of people coming out of the woodworks to check on you with this energy that's going, going on collectively right now, I feel like people are going to be texting you and asking how you're doing, how you're handling it, what you think about what's going on, um, you know, leaders, I've been, I'm in Aries, my, Aries myself, so it's, it's easy for me to tune into this energy, and um, I, I do feel like a lot of you, you know, have leadership qualities and people see that. So I do think that people are going to be coming to you for support and guidance and they're going to want to hear your opinions on this. And people might be using this as an excuse to talk to you. You might have some exes or just some men that have been kind of lurking on the sidelines watching you that are going to use this whole incident as an excuse to, um, to you know, open the doorway to communication with you. All right, so for Aries viewers, what is your person thinking, feeling about you? What is your person thinking and feeling about you? What are their thoughts? What are their emotions? What do they think about when they think about you? What are they? Okay. I'm going to take one more. Three more, actually. Okay. That works, I guess. The Hermit. The Moon. They might want you to come out of your shell more with this Hermit energy right here. I kind of feel like... What else do we have? We have the High Priestess. The Six of Pentacles, so the Three of Cups, Seven of Cups, okay. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what to make of this. It's an interesting reading. You guys got a very, you have a very unique situation going on here. This has not been like my other readings today so far or yesterday. This is a very, it's some interesting mixed energy you have going on here. So your person is very afraid of getting hurt. I feel like this is someone who's who's pretty independent and they kind of, they don't connect with a lot of people. Um, they are, I feel like you guys might have actually, this could be a twin flame. I feel like almost you guys have some very mutual energy when it comes to it. I think that you have this, it's almost like a, it's like introverted energy, but it's, it's, um, how do I explain that? <sighs> It's like you guys might be extroverts to a degree, but I feel like you don't connect with a lot of people or like they don't connect with a lot of people. It's kind of like like you're an introvert on a soul level, if that makes any sense. So did I word that right? Um, it's, it's like you're very... You guys are very social. Like you know how to talk to people. Um, and you know how to put how to do it, but it's like it's you're you're very introverted at the same time. It's like yes, there might be a lot of people around you, or a lot of people that want your influence and want your guidance, but it's like they don't really fully get you. They don't they don't fully know you. You still even if you have a lot of people around you, you still feel alone. And this is more about your person, how they feel. You know, they still feel alone too, and they're looking to the past. But I feel like they're trying to move on from the past. I feel like they're trying to let go of a karmic or they're trying to just let go of that old energy. They're trying to let go of the loneliness. They're trying to let go of this, um, just this isolation and this hermit energy. They're trying to find the right people in their life, but they feel alone around almost everybody. And, and so it's hard. It's like they're very social and they're just, they're not meeting the right people though. Um, I think this goes for both friends and lovers. It's like they're they're really social people. They have a lot to offer, 
but it's like they're just they're not they still feel alone inside they still feel misunderstood they still might have some communication skills and with the moon it's almost like you see like the moon to me is about intuition it could also be moon magic so if you're doing spells on the full or new moon it could it might say you know this is this is affecting them this is this is taking effect right now um and to me the moon is it's all about intuition and you see how the moon is looking towards this ten of swords right here you know the moon to me i always associate it with witchcraft but it's it's also about intuition and fear and fantasy and illusion and and kind of these things that are these secrets these secret feelings that are kind of being hidden by the moonlight if that makes any sense at all um and so you know this this card is looking it's like this person your person wants to get out of isolation they want to open up they want to be vulnerable they want to make new friends they want to make they want to be around you they want to they want to let go of the past but it's kind of like you know like see, see the moon is looking at the ten of swords so your person has a lot of fear. They have been hurt a lot. They've been through a lot of betrayal. Because the Ten of Swords, it's, it's like the... It's almost similar to the Death card, in my opinion. You see this person kind of drowning in their pain. It, it's like... But they've just... They're not even fighting it anymore. They're just kind of like, okay, I have to, like... I'm letting this go now. I'm letting... I'm getting... Um, getting through this energy now. Um, so it's like a very heavy betrayal... And I feel like this could be with the karmic. It could be something they went through with them um, in the the near or distant past. And that energy has never fully gone away, I feel. Um, and so it's kind of like they try to get into this moon energy where they're, they're trying to... You're helping them use their intuition more. I feel like you guys have a very strong telepathic connection. And, um, and so I feel like you're helping them... In the astral realm, you're helping them use their intuition and develop their intuition more. But then their fear takes over, and it's like they look at this, the, you know, the moon card, the intuitive card here is looking at this ten of swords and thinking like, well, you know, this person betrayed me in the past. This person hurt me. This person cheated on me. This person let me down. This person didn't want me. This person rejected me. You know, this person um, did all did this and this and this, and I was heartbroken. And your person has a very big heart. They're a very, very loving person. They're a very gentle, very empathetic person. And and your person is just looking at this energy like, like they're trying to be intuitive. They're trying to, to focus on this beautiful telepathic connection that you guys have. And then they get blocked by their fear and they get lost in their head and they start thinking, well, everyone else has hurt me. Why would this person be any different? But at the same time, they feel alone around most of the people they're around. And they know that... You are the high priestess. They know that you are different. They know that um, that you're this this intuitive spiritual goddess. You know, and you're you've got this book open right here. It's like you're teaching them new things. Like you, they see you as this very wise person. That's kind of why I felt like they might try to use everything going on with the coronavirus to talk to you. Like they might come in and try to um, use that as an excuse. Like. I think they want to protect you, too, from everything that's going on. I do feel like they want to protect you, but I feel like they also just want to... Um, I feel like they're scared themselves to some degree, and they want to know what you think about this. They know that you're very intuitive, and they want to know... Um, they feel like you're very wise, and so they want to know what your opinion is on, on all the things that are going on outside right now. They want to talk to you about it. And again, they're kind of just using it as an excuse for, for an opening here to talk to you. But, th but they do see you as a wise person, and they do see you as the high priestess. They see you as someone who's very sacred, very feminine, very empathetic and loving, very wise. They, they have a lot of respect for you. They know that they can't just come to you with half-ass... Um, excuses or half-ass energy they know that they have to um i almost see him like kneeling in front of you almost like he sees you as like this beautiful like the high priestess like a queen a priestess like he sees he knows you're sacred he knows you're holy he knows you're very special and very different um and so it's like with the moon energy it's like it's it's helping him this this intuitive energy and he sees you as someone who is very very abundant and very gracious with your knowledge, I feel. I feel like this a strong um, emphasis on knowledge and intuition here. So it's kind of like he sees you as... Um, 
and just someone who's generous. This is, this is again, this is someone who's just very, she just has this beautiful feminine energy and that's how he sees you. And he's, he just, he knows, again, he knows you're different. He really does. And I kind of feel like he wants to take you on it. Well, with this, okay, with this energy, again, he feels, he feels you're someone who's pretty stable, probably financially stable too. He feels like you're, Again, he feels like you're someone he worships. Like you're someone that he might not say it in front of you, but you're you're he sees you as as almost above him. Like he sees you as someone um like he really trusts your judgment. He really trusts your opinion. He doesn't think that you're he doesn't feel like you're too logical or too emotional. He he feels like you're very intuitive and that you have a very good balance and a very good head on your shoulders. So um, if he hasn't already asked you for advice, I feel like you are someone that he would go to for advice. And with the Three of Cups and the Seven of Cups here, what I'm getting from this is the Three of Cups with, do you see the, the Alice in Wonderland? So I think he also feels like you're kind of, you're unique. This is what I get. You could be a cat lady too. Um, but you see her, she's very like this woman is very independent like she's very different like this is this is the energy i get mostly from this reading is just like you're very different like you're very different um you're very fun and creative and intuitive and out there and and you're just you're you're not like anything he's used to and with the seven of cups it's kind of like he's just dreaming about you like he's just it, again the moon is coming up so the moon, you might get some 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 new insight with the new moon or the full moon. Maybe you'll get a text. Um, maybe you're doing spell work and it's it's starting to work and it's just kind of confirming things. And um, with this with this the Seven of Cups, I feel like let me see. All these cards, you know, the moon, the Seven of Cups, the High Priestess. I see them all as as intuitive. Is about you know focusing on intuition. And this is very similar energy, at least in my opinion, how I read these cards, the moon and the seven of cups. And, you know, you see the woman in the seven of cups, it's like she's, that that's him, that's your masculine. And he's, you know, he's dreaming about you. He's thinking about you. He's thinking, he's wondering what his um, next step should be. He's wondering what he could do next, but it's like he's getting lost in his head. It's like he's just dreaming about you and fantasizing about you. But he's like living in this fantasy world. He's living in his head. And I do feel like the energy I get from your masculine is that he's very, very loving and very empathetic. And he's got a really big heart. I feel like he was probably bullied and teased a lot when he was younger. I feel like he's a romantic, which is really rare for men these days, it seems. so. And he's, he's in tune with this romantic side of himself. He might be a little bit nerdy, too. Um... It's really sweet. He's a really, he's a, this is a, this is a good energy I pick up. I like this, this energy that I'm picking up from this guy, um, from your, from your men. There's multiple men that are, that are coming through to channel to get these messages to you. You know, if this is resonating, then this is your, your, your man could very well be telepathically talking through me right now to you. That's how that works. You know, there's these soul groups that kind of, or these, these energy groups that come in, um, to channel through me to give these messages to you. And then you end up being drawn to the, um, your spirit knows, you know what I mean? Your spirit knows which videos to click on and which ones are not for them. Anyway, with the Seven of Cups here, it's 111 if that means anything to you guys, if you guys are seeing numbers, 111. Um, I've been seeing numbers a lot today, actually. Um, with the Seven of Cups here, again, it's it's like like I said, they have a very big heart and they have an, a, a big imagination. They were probably bullied in school. They probably felt alone their whole life. They've probably been kind of distant from people their whole life to some degree. I mean, they have social skills. They do have good social skills. They are charming, but I feel like deep down they feel alone. Deep down they have a hard time connecting. They're very different. Um, they're also very different, just like you are, than most people. So it's not as easy for them to connect with others. And with the Seven of Cups, though, I feel like, again, I feel like they were bullied when they were younger. And so I think they kind of learn this as like a survival mechanism. They learn to just live in their heads. They learn to just kind of dream and just not act on their dreams because they've gotten, your masculine has gotten rejected and gotten his heart broken so many times. I mean, everyone has, but your masculine has more than most. He's... Um, you know, he's one of those guys that really does believe in love and does go after what he wants for the most part, but then it's like it's gotten him hurt and betrayed and cheated on so many times. 
And so again, he's just his whole life he's kind of developed this defense mechanism, this 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 coping mechanism where he just kind of lives in his head and he just kind of dreams about you. So he fantasizes about you. I see him sexually fantasizing about you too. I see at night, I see him touching himself, thinking about you. Um, and you might feel that energy too. You might telepathically be feeling that. Um, but it's like he just dreams and he dreams and dreams and dreams and doesn't take action in the real world. And with the moon card here, it's it's like he's intuitively, he's picking up on your thoughts and your feelings and your longing for him. But it's like the fear is still getting in the way. He's still like, maybe it's safer to just dream and not do anything. You know what I mean? It's like that fear that, like, you know, we saw the, the moon earlier was looking at the Ten of Swords. So it's like he starts being intuitive. He starts picking up on you telepathically. And then he looks at the Ten of Swords and he's like, but I've been hurt so much. But I've been cheated on so much. But I've been, you know, why would this be different? I've been through this and this and this. And, and then he just kind of gets lost in his head and just continues to dream without taking action. Um... With the Three of Cups here, though, I will also say another meaning that I got from this card when looking at it is that I feel like your masculine is wanting to take you on a date. Like, he thinks you're fun and creative and different and spunky and all these amazing things. Um, you know, I don't know if tea resonates. Tea, rabbits, cats, do those resonate to any of you? Um, like, drinking bars, drinking tea, uh, anything like that. Um, with the Three of Cups and the Southern Cups, I think it's kind of dreaming about, um, about this energy. So the Three of Cups, it's like a celebration, it's fun times, it's really good conversation, deep conversation, silly conversation, um, you know, social events. This is like really good energy. So I feel like that's one of the things that they're dreaming about. They're dreaming about this energy. They're dreaming about this could be an event, maybe when you guys were hanging out, like maybe like a social event, like if you guys went to a bar or a club or somewhere together, or maybe you guys just, you guys just had good conversation, like they just, you just, you just resonate with them on a soul level in ways other people don't. Um, and so they're kind of dreaming about that. They're kind of, they're, they're nostalgic and they're reminiscing on these, these memories with you. And I feel like for some of you, it's also future energy where they're thinking about um, how fun it would be to go on a date with you, how, you know, all your creative ideas and your insights and your, your just how intuitive and wise you are just talking to you. They feel like you probably are a really good conversationalist. They feel like you probably have so much to say that would actually help them on their own creative path. And, and so they're kind of, that's, they're kind of dreaming about that too. They're dreaming about taking you on a date and, and what that conversation would look like and, and how you guys would flirt and how, you know, they're, they're thinking about all that. So the desire is there. And again, the feelings are there. I do really pick up that the feelings are there. They're just, um, they're just not used to acting on those feelings. All right, let's see what their actions might be towards you. What actions are they going to take towards you? Um, and if this is resonating, please like, share, subscribe. I am a new reader on YouTube, so when you like my videos, it helps my videos get promoted because YouTube sees that people are engaging with the content. So it really does help me just to simply um, like or comment if this resonates. And um, you know, if, if, if it does resonate, subscribe too because I will be doing another Aries video in about maybe a week or so from now. And I also do regular soulmate and twin flame videos that may resonate with you if you want to check out my channel for that. Anyway, what will your person, and I do not intend, my cards are all mixed up, so let me, let me state this now. I do not intend on reading these upside down. If any are upside down, I'm going to um, put them right side up. What action is your person, so for Aries viewers, what action is your person most likely going to be taking towards you? Over the next, I would say week or two, over the next week or two, what is your, so for the Aries viewers, for all the Aries that are watching this video, what is your person most likely going to do in the next week or two? The warrior. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. <laughs> that is a good card. I like getting that card. <laughs> 
You see, this is a very masculine man. This is an old-fashioned, possibly an old-fashioned man. It's just someone who, um, I just sense a good energy from this man that, I re that I'm reading for you guys, like, from these men that are here. Like, I do sense a very, um, it's like he's very, you guys both have a lot of good masculine and feminine qualities, I feel. And so it's like this man is very romantic and he's very emotional and sensitive and he's very empathetic and caring and he's got a really good heart, but he's also got a lot of life experience. He's been through a lot of pain um, and he's also very intelligent and wise. And so he does kind of have this, this warrior spirit here where he does have strength. You know what I mean? He's got the best of both worlds. He's, he's empathetic and sensitive and loving, but also very strong and, um, and experienced at the same time. So this is a really good man you guys have here. And he's got the, you know, the warrior to me, that's, that's warrior energy. It's like, he knows he needs to stop dreaming. He knows he needs to take some action. Um, And then loyalty comes up. Oath. Reminder. I feel like this could almost be like a karmic situation that he's in. This could be like a job or another person, and it's like he's kind of like loyal to it, but not by choice. It's like he made a promise. And he's trying to do the honorable thing, and he's being reminded of that. Like, he's trying to kind of, like, get away from that, but it's like he's being reminded of that. Um, and so it's hard for him to take action. I feel like, so for some of you, I feel like the loyalty is to you, and he's remembering promises that he made to you that he needs to honor. I do overall sense a good energy from him. I do sense him... You are on his mind. Um, it's just a matter of getting him out of this like dreamlike energy. Let me see if I can get some more clarification. So I think I just wanted to say that. Like I think it just wanted to tell you, you know, there could be a karmic situation here, but it's like it's like the loyalty is more out of obligation than genuine love, if that makes sense. It's kind of like maybe this person has done a lot for him. Could be family that doesn't like you too. Um, and, and so he's kind of trying to get free from that energy. Let's see what, let's be more specific here. Can you show me what this person, I mean, it's, it's, it's point of the fact that, you know, this person is still in this energy, so it's kind of complicated. But let's see, can you tell me what is this person most likely going to do towards the Aries viewers? What is the most likely action that they're going to take over the next week or two? And can we get some clarification on that, on what they're planning on doing, what they're going to do towards the Aries viewers over the next week or two? What are they going to do over the next week or two? Okay. Choices. So they're going to be making a choice between you and this karmic person or this karmic, again, it could be, and that may not necessarily be a person. It could just be a situation that they're in. Um, and again, I see a lot of, there's a lot of fear and illusion and a lot of, it's kind of like they want to be with you, but they're scared because it's like, it's new. It's, it's different. It's so unique. It's almost like you're their, like you are their unicorn. Have you guys heard that term being someone's unicorn where it's like, you're just so different and you're so special and you're so rare that they know that if they lost something like that, that they wouldn't recover from it. And this person has already been through so much heartbreak in their life that they just don't know how to do it again. You know, this person is again, a romantic, someone who really has a strong um, hard and so they're very careful who they let in because they know once they let someone in they can't just simply forget about it but um, this person you know is trying to make this choice um, there might be angelic spirits you know maybe Michael this looks like Michael to me when I see this card or actually it didn't before but it does now um, maybe helping them with this decision and kind of putting them into this meditative state where they're they might be, they might actually become aware that you are telepathically reaching out and they might try to go into meditation 
to connect with you. They might actually get to that point. And <laughs> message, that's awesome. So that's good. You might be getting a text or a call from them this in the next week or two. With meditation, so with choices in meditation, what I what how I take that is, you know, they're 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 meditating on um, the choice that they need to, need to make. They're weighing the pros and cons. They're trying to balance and kind of calm down a little bit too, because I do feel like when they think about you, they think, oh my God, what if she broke my heart? What if she isn't as different as I thought you know thought she was? What if she does betray me and cheat on me like these other girls have? Like, how am I supposed to trust anyone? How do I trust her? Like, he's got some really deep-rooted trust issues. Um, so he's really meditating on making these choices and, and trying to get past this fear energy. Um, but again, he just, he dreams so much, and that's such a big problem for you guys, is he just gets, it's like he thinks about you, but instead of going for his phone, he goes to bed, and he touches himself and thinks about you, or he, he, um, you know, fantasizes, or he he he's nostalgic. He he fantasizes about what it would be like to take you on a date, and how fun you would be, and and what kind of cute clothes you would wear if you guys went on a date together. You know what I mean? It's like he just kind of he's got a he's trying to get into that warrior energy more, where he can actually take some action. Um, and and I do see the angels helping him here, and also the gods and goddesses, of course. And I see them. Um, you know, again, I see him meditating and focusing on this, and I see him trying to develop his intuition because I do think he's becoming aware of the telepathic connection that you guys have, and I think it really means something to him. I think he is understanding. I think he's someone that's opened open up to the to psychic work and spirituality. He's open to that, but I don't feel like he's fully familiar with it, like not 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 completely. So I think that he's kind of. He's just kind of becoming aware, like, oh, I wonder, like, when I just think of her out of nowhere. Is that her thinking about me? Is there something to that? Like, what's going on with that? Like, he's starting to think about it, and he's starting to make these decisions. And again, if there's a karmic partner or a karmic situation, it's kind of like it's just out of obligation and familiarity, but I don't think that there's any real genuine deep love there. And I feel like once he really meditates and, and calms down and tries to get let go of this fear, which the angels seem to be helping him with, I do feel like you might be getting a message from him. You might be getting a, a hey, maybe a casual, hey, what's up? How's it going? Again, might be using this whole coronavirus thing as an excuse to talk to you. You know, fragment, he still feels like he's just almost like a shell of who he once was. It's like he's... It just kind of, lo I don't know if lost is the right word. It's like he's just, he's got some trust issues. He's really been through a lot. And then there, there's the moon again, and there's the moon again. So it's, it's such interesting energy. Um, that's really interesting. And you keep getting cats too, cats and birds. <laughs> so that's interesting. You might be a cat lady. <laughs> um... With the fragment, with the moon showing up again, I really think it's, it's you have a strong connection to the moon right now, and, and all the you're being heavily in, influenced by the moon at this time over the past month or so, um, and so get in tune with that. You know, the moon, the full moon, the new moon, like pay attention to the moon cycles, and when you're meditating and trying to send him telepathic thoughts and send him this this energy and connect with him astrally, um, telepathically. Try to do that, like try to pay, be aware of the moon cycles when you do that because I feel like there's certain times when your third eye is open and his third eye is open and you want to jump on that opportunity to send him these telepathic messages and you guys are already communicating telepathically. I do sense there might be a physical message coming in. I think it might be like fragmented, like it's not going to be as deep as you want it to be because again with the moon card here, it's like he's still kind of in that fantasy and that fear and not really not fully taking action but i, I do sense like they're there the desire is there the love is there and he knows that you're different which is really important is that he knows he's not he's, he knows he's not going to find someone else like you um he gets that and i think sooner or later with the, i think that sending him telepathic messages and energy is really in your favor right now because um because he does feel it he does feel if you're doing sex magic or just you know just simply thinking about him when you're doing that he he feels it 
Um, and, and so it, it is working out in your favor to continue to do that and to try to try to be mindful. You have a very, very, like I said, you have a very strong telepathic connection. So be mindful of the energy that you're sending him. Be really conscious of that. And, you know, you might want to do check-ins once in a while, do some, like, if you if you do tarot cards yourself or, you know, channel or whatever you do, you might want to do check-ins yourself once in a while and just say, like, hey, how is my person feeling today? Um, you know, is he doing okay? Like, what's, because your person is very sensitive, and so it's like you want to be very soft and gentle with him when you communicate because he really gets his feelings hurt easily, I think. Um And it's, sometimes it's hard for people to understand him. There might be some miscommunication there once in a while. So, again, be very mindful how you communicate. And sometimes you might want to check in and see how he's doing and just send him some healing energy. He is getting the healing energy and the, the telepathic messages. So, okay, so let me just pull some more cards just really quick. For the Aries viewers... What messages, what final messages do you, does, your, does your person have for you? What final messages does your person have for you? Final messages. Okay. You probably can't see these, so I guess I'll just read them, that, read them off to you. The first one says, I haven't forgotten about that night. I think about it often. So again, if you guys went on a date, I feel like he's really nostalgic about that. Like he's really thinking like, or whenever you guys like talked in person, like it was like some kind of social event. He's thinking about what you wore. Um, he's thinking about just your energy, this like this beautiful energy that you were in, this, this intuitive high priestess um, type of energy that you were in. He's thinking about that energy. He's thinking about you. He hasn't forgotten about you. Oh, and this does not surprise me. I look for you in crowded rooms. You're the one person that makes me feel like I'm not alone. I look for you in crowded rooms. You are the one person who makes me feel like I'm not alone. Wow, that's beautiful. So it's kind of like, yeah, if you guys were at like a social, like some kind of social event where there's a lot of people, it's almost like I feel like this person is like, like looks for you at that if it's like a place you used to go to, maybe it was like in a, like a like a certain club or a bar or like a community center or something, some place you guys used to go to, or some place where he thinks that you might be, um, where I think he like sometimes I feel like he looks for you there, like he hopes that you'll you'll be there, he hopes you'll show up, and it's like when he's surrounded by all these people, he just feels alone and he like kind of like just wishes that you were there with him. He really misses you. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. So I feel like he might have had some doubts about your connection at first, but he's um he's starting to wake up. He's starting to he's really developing. His third eye is like opening more and more every day. He's really coming into his telepathic psychic power and he's, you know, he's sorry that he didn't understand the nature of this connection before, but he's starting to understand it now. And we've got I'm unwilling to be vulnerable at this time. So again, he's still ha he's still struggling with the fear and all the past pain, all the heartbreaks, the, the bullying, just all the stuff that he's been through. Um, then we've got yes. So yes, I, I think, let me ask what this is saying yes to, actually. I'm going to pull some cards after this. Your empathy and openness draws me to you. I love your willingness to be honest and vulnerable. Your heart is pure. So your empathy and your openness draws him in, and your willingness to be honest and vulnerable you know, he sees you as a very pure, pure heart. He sees you as someone who's who's loving and empathetic like he is. Um, please send me healing support. I need, please send me healing energy. I need love and support right now. So he's asking you, you know, continue doing, continue sending him healing. It really is working. And you have been showing up in my dreams lately. Like you are, you have such a strong telepathic connection with this person. So if you're having dreams about them, he's, he's also having dreams about you too. Um, and you might want to do some dream work. You might want to put the intention in. I have a, a dream spell on here, actually, that you can use to send someone a message in their dream. So you could try that. But, you know, you are they're having dreams about you. They're, they're aware that this is a soulmate or a twin flame connection. They're aware that this is, like, different, unique. They're aware. They're, they, they feel that past life soul recognition with you. I sleep to dream of you. Meet me in the dream world tonight. I will wait for you there. So, again, there's such a strong 
emphasis on dreams and astral travel and telepathy. You guys are both very spiritual people, and your energy is bringing him in, into his spirituality. It's, it's it's awakening his third eye. You what you're doing now, whether you're conscious of it or not, it's opening his third eye and connecting you guys on a very deep deep level in the astral realm. I'm, I'm, af I'm afraid of getting hurt. I want to trust you, but I'm not sure if I can. So everything that we just said um, <laughs> basically just clarified. <laughs> okay, so yes. What is he saying yes to? What is he saying yes to? <laughs> okay, I guess I'll just take these bottom three and see what they say. All right, spirit, let's do it. <laughs> high priestess, he's saying yes to you. He's saying yes to the high priestess. He's saying yes to your wisdom and your guidance and your love and your energy. He's he's wanting this. He's in tune with this. But again, the Ten of Swords, is it's the fear is still there. With the Ten of Pentacles, though, I think maybe he's working on career finances, and it's like he's kind of maybe developing confidence. It's kind of like he's... He wants a new start, I think, actually, is what this reading is trying to say, t tell me. Because, look, it says yes, and then I wanted to clarify, because I feel like he's saying yes to you. He's saying yes to the High Priestess. And then we've got the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Pentacles there. So this is, despite the despair and all the, the, the heavy energy with the Ten of Swords, it's also a new dawn. It's also like the darkness right before the light comes out. Um, it's like the end of all that pain. It's the end of all that heartbreak. It's the end of the karmic relationships. It's the end of all these people that cheated on him and all that negative energy. And the same with, with pentacles, with with career blocks and finances and things that, um, just anything that's held them back. It's like they want this new start in love and they also want this new start um, with career and finances. And it all kind of goes together. And again, with their third eye opening right now, I feel like these changes are coming in um, pretty soon for them. So, so yeah, very strong telepathic connection. Keep up with the telepathic messages. Keep up, keep up with the meditation. However, you're sending them, however you guys are telepathically communicating um, in dreams, in the astral realm, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. They feel it. Keep sending them love and support. Remember to be gentle with this masculine because they're, they're very. This group of masculines is, is very sensitive and very um, romantic and very emotional. So so make sure that you're very gentle when you when you talk to him. Because I feel like you're so special to him too and you're so rare that if you guys talk, like he really values everything you say. And so you make, want to make sure that you don't say something hurtful or offensive because, you know, he thinks that everyone's all the same and you're like the one rare person in his life that he feels is, is just different. And, and so you really want to be mindful of how you word things. You really want to show him this gentle, loving, empathetic energy, both physically and astrally. Um, so thank you guys for watching. If this resonates, please, you know, like, share, subscribe. Like I said, it helps me promote on YouTube. It, it makes my videos pop up on, on people's news feeds a little bit more. So it, it helps me get out there. And I will be doing another Aries video in the near future. Thank you guys.